Good day everyone, welcome to the Deco Person Invest channel. So in today's video we'll be looking at um, how to upload files to Firebase using Google. So but before we get into the video, I'd like to mention something. So first thing first, if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've been following videos on the channel but um, you haven't subscribed for some reason, please also consider subscribing to the channel. So I'm trying to grow the channel, so just please help me out and help me grow the channel. And also um, hit the notification bell after you subscribe and make sure that you change the um, the notification tab from personalized to all so when I release new videos you'll be the first to be notified. So with that said um, the first thing we need to do before we get into the code is to do some configurations on Firebase. So the first thing is um, you need a Firebase account and also a project created. So um, the scope of this video is outside of, is outside of that so I'll just simply drop a link in the video description on how to create a firebase account and also and also how to create a project on the account so i already have my project set up here which is basically the sample project so i'll just open the project so now I'm, now that i'm in the project the first thing i want to do is to come to this particular settings logo here and come to project settings then i'll go to service accounts in the service account you need to create a service account if you are new to um, firebase you need to create a service account also so i'll also be leaving a link in the video description on how to do that and it's actually pretty much a straightforward process you probably don't need the video but just for um, guidance i'll drop a link to a video where you can um, learn how to do that in this video description so when we come here we've created like um, a service account we will generate we we'll click this generate new private key so i generate this key so this key is something that is very important that you shouldn't um, show other people's monitor is meant to be private so you shouldn't make other people see it because this is probably like your portal into um, firebase so that's the first thing so if you look at this side of the um, screen here yeah, they've given um, the a good snippet on how to con on how to um, connect to firebase with different languages so here we have go so this code snippets when we go into the code you'll be saying this code snippets now are good so this is basically a way to connect to firebase with go so that's the first configuration we'll be doing so i already have this download before but now that i download it i don't delete it but i have it downloaded before and one more thing is when you download it the name that will be given to you might not be the service account key.json but you can just change the name to this or any other name you can leave it the way it is or any other name that you want to name it but just to like um, be in sync with this code snippet here, i renamed the file put the json file to service account key.json so that's the first configuration and next configuration is we come to storage so if you are just creating a firebase account you might not have storage here because this project shortcut basically shows like um, a history of the things that have been doing just of recent so you can just come to build and you come to storage also so you get storage in case storage is not showing under this project shortcut tab so when it comes to storage you need to create a bucket so this is the bucket i have this this here is my bucket so i also leave a link in this video description now to um, set up storage on firebase and how to create the bucket so when you set up the storage i create a bucket the first bucket you'll be creating they won't be giving you for it so it is free but subsequent buckets if you want to create subsequent buckets you have to um, give the link because you'll be charged for it so yeah what we basically need is the bucket id which is this here because you'll be needing it to connect to this bucket so if you are familiar with um, Firebase before, if you are familiar with Google Cloud, so um, Firebase storage also um, is similar to Google Cloud storage where you have like a bucket. So that bucket is like a container or a memory space where you store files in. And the files that you store in that bucket are called objects. So that is basically, so all we need here is just this. So you can just copy this and add it as an environmental variable. So now we we'll move into the code. So now in the code, the first thing we need to do is um, connect to Firebase, which is basically that code snippets that is on the service account page that i showed earlier so this is it here but before that i'm loading i'm loading an app.env file so that app.env is just basically this file here and the file is just where i'm storing the id to my bucket i'm just calling the id bucket name and i'm storing it to this id so this line here helps me read files help me read data from my app.env file and this is from package go.env so because i don't want to like add code the bucket name as a variable to my code i'm just adding it here then this is the service account key i downloaded the private key i downloaded so this is it here so like i said i won't be opening it because it's meant to be something that is private so you shouldn't open it and you shouldn't also push it to a public repository where people can see it so that is basically the two things that we need 
So with that, after we've connected, so we create an a, a client options by using a function with credential files on package option, which is this here. And then we use the client options to create an app. So the app takes in three. Then we use the function new app to create an app with the client options, and it takes in three arguments. The first one is a constant. The second one is a config, a Firebase config. Firebase config because we also pass in email and the third one is the client options, which is this OPT variable. So we just check for the error. One with the error. If there's an error, we just return some error for internal and error return. Then now that we are connected, so at this point here, we are connected to Firebase. The next thing we need to do is to migrate to our storage. So to migrate to storage, we'll be using the um, we'll be using the metal storage on our app variable, which is basically this here. So that will give us a storage client and an error. So I'm just calling this client and an error, then I'm checking for the error. So now that we have a client, the next thing we need to do is so at this point here, we're already in our storage panel, we're already in our storage page on our Firebase console. So the next thing we need to do is to specify the bucket that we want to use. So we use the method bucket, and this is our client, our storage client, to paste the bucket we want to use. And this one takes in one argument, which is the name of the bucket. So I'm just using OS get from bucket name. So since I already load my app.n file. If I call OS get from, it's just simply going to the app.n file and it will get the environmental variables from here. So the environmental variable I'm using is the bucket name. That is what I add here. So that will give us, um, so this here gives us a bucket and one and error. So a bucket and one and error. So at this point, we just handle the error. At this point, we already have like a pointer for a pointer to our bucket, which is something that we can use to like store files in our bucket. So the next thing we want to do now is to get the file that we want to store in our bucket. So the file I want to store is this backup the file of jpg. So this is just this image file. So when I have the file, just use OS open to open the file. Then I'll check for the error. If there's an any error opening the file, then I'll depart the closing of the file. So this is just like a little bit of memory management. Good. So and also a rule of thumb that whenever you're working with um, files or anything that you are need to close or anything that has a close method, you always have to like close it. So that's basically it. Then the next thing we need to do is now to create like an object from that file. Because we're not just put the file into the pocket, we need to create an object from the file, then we put the object inside the pocket. So to create an object, we're using the method object on this pocket handle here. And we're passing in the name of the file that we want to we want the name that we want the file to be when it is uploaded. So I'm just simply calling f dot which will just be basically the name of the image, which is to back up the file of jpg. So now that we have an object and we have our pockets, we just need to like write the object into our pocket. But for that, we need the writer that we use to write our objects to our pocket. So to get the writer, we'll call the method new writer on our objects handle. Then this one takes in one argument, it's just a context and passing context by path into it. So I'm creating a writer with that. And after creating a writer, we need to set some metadata. So this metadata is this particular line here is very, very important because then um, if you don't actually add this particular line, your file will be uploaded, this particular metadata line. And um, when I was actually um, working with Firebase um, sometimes earlier this year, um, I actually went into this issue where I didn't add this line because most of the sources I saw, like even when I was following the um, code on the repository for Firebase, which is basically this year, it was specified somewhere that you need to actually do this for the file to be uploaded. So I went online and I made my research. Um, so I need to like, um, I had to go through different blog posts and stack overflow and every other resource. But it took me a lot of time. It took me a lot of time to figure this out. So, but now that I'm watching my video, you are lucky enough because you won't also be facing the same problem. So this line is very, very important. So the metadata we are setting is just file based storage download proteins. And we are setting the value to a random, a randomly generated UUID. So this ID, I'm just using it using package UUID. So if I call the function, it will give me a UUID. But I want that as a string, <coughs> not, um, I want as a string, not a UUID. So if I just put the method string on it to basically make it a string. So I'll be adding a string here, which is the the token. Fire big storage and the tokens. And I also the file code of the writer. So after that, I'll simply copy the file into the writer. So this writer is kind of like a port that opens up into our object. So it's just like a port that we use to um, wrap our object over the file that we want to store inside the pocket. So I'll simply write with the file. I'll write the file into the writer. And that's it basically. So I'll just add a copy. So it takes in the destination and the source. So the destination is just the writer and the source is the file, which is basically this here. Then we'll check for the error.
then if everything goes on just simply print out image for processing speed first so that is basically how the code works but before i run the code i also like to go on a little bit of commercial break so i will be pausing for three seconds and within those three seconds i would like you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed so three seconds okay great so if you didn't subscribe to the channel and i i, I am actually um, i will really appreciate if you subscribe and if you subscribe to the channel thank you very much so that will be it so i'll just simply run the code now So it says image of the successful cheers. So our image has successfully uploaded. So let us go to our file this and see. So I'm my book. I'll simply refresh it. And then I have it back. I'll go back to file the JPG. So if I open this, this is the image here. So that is basically it. So that is it for this video. So in the next video, I'm also planning to release like a second part or a sequel to this video. And what is that second part? So it's just basically to just how to get our file back from fire this to our local machine so i want you to actually add that video to the end because i don't want the video to be too long so i'm going to end for the viewers so i'll be making videos as short as possible short and as informative as possible so i'll be adding that to the but make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell and put it to all so when i release that video you'll be the first to be notified and also and if you like the content of this video make sure you give it thumbs up cheers